Hey everyone, welcome to the Brie and P podcast, episode three, the greatest migration, Dallas edition. I'm Brie. And I'm P. And this is our special guest. And I'm Rue. <laughs> We're gonna get started with our tequila talk segment. Every time we're together, unfortunately, we always have tequila. Yeah. <laughs> At this yeah. point, we need our own Brie and Pete tequila featuring <laughs> Rue. Um, <laughs> but it's it's not just for the shots. We also want to do some check-ins. So we're gonna go ahead and do it in a different way today. If y'all could describe an album that sums up your like mental state or how you're feeling right now, what would it be? Take the shot after to like oh, decompress. I thought it was to open up. Okay. Oh, so um, I mean, we could. No, we can do it now. We can talk first. <laughs> I think the shot. It makes sense. She needs to. I think she, she needs, needs to warm, warm up. up. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. I'm a solid alcoholic. <laughs> I'm tasting with water. We all like are. Some- now, and mine don't sparkle. Oh. Mine's bland. Y'all got Mariah like, Carey, I got J-Lo, like. But we all chase some water, that's so healthy, look at that. She do, uh, but she can't. Uh, okay. We would never chase for water though. Oh, man. Um, I'm gonna um, need that. Okay, who wants to go first? Um, I guess I can go first. So, I kinda wanna say the album of the, like a time where I wish I was right now. Mm. So like, I feel like everybody can agree. 2016 was an era. Like yes, it was. Huh? And I was in the shower and Color and Book by Chance the Rapper. Oh my god. That album came on and I was just. It was like nostalgia. Like I'm like I just wish I was in this place right yes. now. Like yeah, I was yes. like graduating high school or like freshman year in college and life was just simple. So I was like, this is where I wish I was right now. So it was just like a, a reminisce yeah. type of mind. Yeah. You'll get there. You'll get back there. Yeah. You will. It's coming. But it's going to be a different album. Right. It, it might right. be a lotto album. I do yeah. love her. Yeah. In the yeah. summer she's is. She's Capricorn. Oh, is she? She, she is. Love Capricorn. Too. Okay. And the, I'm repping Sag today. I'm repping Sag <laughs> today. <This> but <laughs> no, I think um, this summer it's just getting yeah. started. Yeah. yeah. And you got to, like, if you aren't there or whatever's happening now, you got to get through all that. Oh, yeah, to no, really enjoy the, that, you yeah. know what I mean? Cause this, I feel like this is gonna be a real iconic <laughs> summer for all of us. Oh. <laughs> I love how she like laughs through. She can't even get Cause y'all know why. I know why. Cause it's not just iconic. <laughs> no, I feel like it is gonna be like a really good summer for all of us though. Like, yes, ma'am. I'm excited. Yes, yes. it's teeing up. I'm very excited. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Rue? I um have so. I was thinking of the album and then I chose the song, the Chilombo album, Janae, the song Speak. You guys know that song? Is that Speak to Me? No, that's no, Speak to that's Me. That's the other like, one. So just like speaking your mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I like that song. I mean, anything it's Janae nice. for you. Oh, yeah. Are you having the same birthday? birthday? Whoa, no, I don't know yet. I'm going to have to buy a ticket. Uh, um, when is it? Coming, I think next month. Maybe? I think it is okay. in July. Is it yeah, July? I think it's July. at the Toyota, whatever. Yeah, okay. everybody gonna be there. Yeah, I'm, okay. Come on, yeah, man. shit, I'll go. And we're gonna have the enlightened people, the fake enlightened, the fake healing. The wanna be enlightened. The yeah. the people who causing their problems, talking about I'm a flower child. No, you are a demon child. Problem child. Problem the child. Problem. Is you? I want yeah. peace. Is <laughs> you? You lack of peace. But it's gonna be a beautiful concert. Yeah, yes, I heard she does like um, she brings out like her. Sound, she has a line now, I think, of oh. sound healing bowls, oh. and they mm. she has them in her songs. So like whatever song is in them, she'll like. Play oh. We don't deserve her. She's Not too. Yeah. She's too like centered. Way and just grounded. like. But I be thinking she can't be real centered because she got that man all tattooed on her arm. His no, I face. for sure think there's a side His to it. His whole face. What's her move? Who? Big Sean. Like, her, his whole face was really? on her arm. It's not a bad face to At have on your arm. I personally wouldn't. But then she covered it up, but then they like, got back together. Hmm. Huh? What's Big Sean's sign? I don't know, but he's from Detroit. He is from Detroit. Let's find out. He's from Detroit. Okay. <laughs> I like his music too. I love Big Sean. Yeah. yeah. He's good. He hasn't put anything new. Has he put anything new? No, but it's not like so. hidden. Oh, he's an Aries. I think. 
I don't really know much about you. Guys, that's my my parents. Oh, oh wait, my dad is an Aries and my mom's a Pisces. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Didn't wow. you say he hate all Aries? I think it's Aries. I hate every Aries out there. And my dad said, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> and to follow up with that, I said, yeah, "Whoa!" Um, for a fact, none of them are normal. <laughs> Yo, mama Pisces. Mm -hmm. My mama Pisces, mm -hmm. and you're a Pisces. Mm -hmm. My mom's a Sag. That's so funny. Yeah. That's What's crazy. Oh wait, so what? And your dad's a Scorpio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My dad a Pisces too. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> We're kind of surrounded by similar things. Wow. Makes sense why we always say that. And then I just bless y'all as a Capricorn. <laughs> Yeah. She's I love like, Capricorn. I don't really. She's the only one I really know and get along with. Really? No, that's not true. Who else, who else is Capricorn? Yo, friend. You do. Yo, uh, friend. Oh yeah, she is Capricorn. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> the, the second friend. The, the oh, second okay. yo friend clicked in. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, mine is Baduism. Oh. Cool. A Pisces. She is a Pisces. Yeah. But she has um, uh, which we call it on their apple tree. And that hits tough because, um, I, don't, I don't know, oh, I was talking to Tay while I was in Atlanta and she's like, I'm just so happy you have Ruben Payton. Oh. And I was thinking about it, I was like, no, like, we're real selective Yeah. in terms of, well, when you move, yeah. you have to be selective. That's true. Um, yeah. That's the only way you can grow. You don't, like, move and then do the same thing over and over. Yeah, right. But that and then um, On and On is on there. Ooh. Certainly is on there. Yeah. Um, sometimes. Uh, like yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. I feel like I wasn't selective when I first moved here though, and that was my That's problem. Okay. Cause like well, it's just hard more though. selective. Yeah, yeah, cause it's like you meet cool people and you're like, oh, oh you're cool. Yeah. I don't know anyone. Like, <laughs> let's be <laughs> friends. When I should have been like, mm. yeah. That's fair. I think that that also shows your growth though. Like, That's true. your discernment just kept getting stronger. Yeah. Because I was selective, but also had that same feeling like, okay, we've gotten to a certain point where I've gotten to know you. I see certain things. I need to fall back. So, no, I feel you. Yeah. I, no, I, when people say, ask me where I'm from, I say Dallas. Oof. Do you uh, really? I do. You, you say Dallas, wait, what? Not where some people here, here from. from. No. Oh, oh you say like, okay, so like when, when you I go travel, somewhere else, you're like, oh, like, like where I'm coming from. in from, they'll be like, oh, because okay. it, I'm at the four That's year mark. I say Dallas, cause I've lived here yeah. for four years. My ID is Texas. Mm, so I say, I'm coming in from Dallas. I, and then they'll be like, mm okay how long have you been there i say four years but i say yeah i'm from dallas because i've been there mm -hmm. and then if they ask further then i say portland but i don't live yeah. in portland like i haven't lived in portland since 2019. where are you born portland yikes yeah i, I have it no meaning like not in a bad way i was about to say <laughs> sorry i'm sorry everybody everybody, everybody 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 i'm from seattle say. i talk to portland every other weekend so yeah everybody, everybody is. Is. i said and that I'll, because when you said you're claiming dallas i'm like i still claim seattle because i was born in seattle and the thought of saying I'm like even when people ask me I'm like oh I flew in from Dallas I live there now but I'm from yeah. Seattle it's like a whole no I just say I'm, like, yeah. I'm coming in from, from Dallas. Dallas. So can we talk about why everybody's moving to Dallas? Hmm. Because I've been here four years. You've been here four, four years. years. How long you been here? Four. Almost four years. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the North Side. Um, so like Midwest, that's where I'm representing. Four on four. Yes. <laughs> I'm learning. I was like, did not know that. Four on four. Period. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Where y'all from? I'm from Portland. I'm from Seattle, Washington. Well, why y'all move here? The cost of living was going wacko in Seattle. Like a, a place I live in now is like my one bedroom. Not new, not like a renovated 2000, like minimum, not in the summer. I used to pay like 1400 when I used to live there. Oh, wow. So, yeah, Seattle's crazy. Constellation. And the weather. Yeah. Really? I moved because, well, I moved originally from Portland because there were no black people. That too. That was like that. the overarching like goal was to move. Now, yeah. the reason why is nobody's business. <laughs> it's nobody's business okay but I wanted a faster pace mm -hmm. and it was either Atlanta Houston or Dallas if I lived in Houston or Atlanta I would not be who I am today okay <laughs> I would be on a different path yeah there's the streets would have <laughs> yeah. okay yeah. but um no Dallas just seemed like the best option mm -hmm. I didn't have any people out here that I knew like that 
Um, I just wanted to start start over. Yeah, I feel like I so I moved out here and I had a job, but it was like COVID, like May of 2020. Mm -hmm. So then they like canceled my job, and I was hustling for like three months. But like even with that, I feel like I wouldn't have been able to like really. And when I say hustling, like DoorDash, um, I was gonna Instacart. Ask <laughs> because... Let me clarify. <laughs> A nigga like me, man. I love the game. I love the hustle, man. It's a lot of hustling. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, no. Type I was shit. doing Instacart and DoorDash. Okay. But I don't think I would have been able to like do that and survive back home. Mm -hmm. Like even doing that here, I was able to be good until I like really got on my feet. It's just so many opportunities here. Like yeah. it's endless. And the black people just be thriving. Like at every yeah. level. Like yeah. you can meet people who are doing this, who are doing that. You don't have to go to one area to find black mm -hmm. people. Like the community is everywhere. Like y'all know where I'm moving. We were out there yesterday. They had a Juneteenth party down there, like a yeah, whole block no, party. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't know that it existed <laughs> out here. I feel like you think about moving and like saying bye and then like getting to your new place and getting set up. But what you don't think about is how do you move and build community during that transition? Because when you move, like, I feel like there's everything but your friends or who you're gonna hang out with on your mind. Like 15 other things are on your mind. So like, how did y'all manage that? <laughs> um, I feel like, so my transition was like not smooth because like I was expecting to have a job, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think I thought about like friends and community and stuff at that time because I was trying to figure out how I was going to get this money by tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm just like, you know, that wasn't on my mind until I got into like a real stable space. Mm -hmm. But I feel like one, once I did kind of get into a stable space and I was like, felt like I really was settled here. Um, I really connected with a whole bunch of Greek people honestly mm -hmm. which is different for me because like i'm i feel like we're all similar in this way we're like we are ourselves but we're also greek not like we're greek this, the yeah and the then greek we have person. personality yeah 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 so i'm just like so i wasn't expecting to like connect with greek people or like that mm -hmm. be the main mm -hmm. people i met first um but it was like beneficial like people always say yeah it's like lifelong thing obviously and like networking this mm -hmm. and the third and you hear it when you in college but then once i moved i really saw that mm -hmm. so it's just like that's how i really found my community just within those type of networks and i think also being in like black greek organizations we're all like very driven people mm -hmm. and have similar values so it was it put me around a lot of like-minded people like mm -hmm. young black people who was really trying to like make a way for themselves here in Dallas because there's a lot of people that move here like when you say you just kicked it like how did that look or what did you do um, was it Instagram was so, it Facebook <laughs> I was in this Facebook? group me in this <laughs> Oh, wow. I was in this group meet. It was called Niggas of Dallas. Oh, you in that? Wow. Not, oh, you You're in, in there? Yeah. I don't have group me downloaded no more, so I'm not even in mm -hmm. no group meets no more. Yeah. Um, but when I first moved, I was in. I was put in that group yeah. meet, and it was like it just kept growing and growing and growing. I think it started with like maybe a hundred some people, and now it's like a thousand plus people in there. So within that, we created smaller friend groups. But not everybody was Greek in there either. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of us were. Mm -hmm. So I forgot your question. But oh, like, like, what did that look like? Yeah, so like yeah. you got into a group meet. Yeah, so we were in a group meet and then from there we kinda formed different bonds. We celebrated birthdays, we celebrated like, let's try this place, let's go here, let's do that. And like, um, it's summertime, let's all go to the pool, we're gonna have a barbecue. So mm -hmm. it really started in group meet, which is weird. But no, that's good to know because yeah. if somebody's trying to move mm -hmm. yeah. and then when they get to that community part, it's like, okay, what does that look like? How yeah. do you actually do it? Because mm -hmm. I'm opposite. Mm -hmm. I'll just talk to people wherever. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So like that's for me, I met, I had a friend, not who lived here, mm -hmm. but was moving through mm -hmm. and we ended up kicking it. Mm -hmm. So he's also Greek. Mm -hmm. And so we all kicked it. And then I befriended people from there. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I just met more people from them and then from them and just like that. So, yeah, so like my way was totally different. I haven't yeah. taken, yo, you know what? That's crazy. In Dallas, I have not used social media to like make friends from Dallas. Like if I see somebody who's in Dallas or whatever, but I don't know them, I have never used 
social media to like make friends. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't think I have either. It makes me feel awkward. I don't know why. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I personally. I, I, I can, weird, but, but I haven't like, yeah. that was never my intention. Like, yeah, yeah. oh, let me find people in Dallas. Let me join yeah. this group. Like, I never did that. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I was kind of thrown into the group. Like, yeah, I was added to Facebook. Yeah. Group. It's like I met people yeah. out and then they're like, oh, let me add you to this. And then like I met it more happens. people. Yes. Yeah. So I'm like, you got to be outside. Like it's one yes. or the other though. I feel like it's yeah. either you're like actually meeting people in person or you're doing it. Cause like mm -hmm. I was the same. Like I thought I was going to have a job, did it. So yeah. I was hustling for the first few months, same yeah. way. And I just was like, okay, I don't even have time to really yeah. like go out and meet people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Yeah. And then kind of similarly, like I have a few people who moved from Seattle here and then they connected, well that's how I met y'all too, connected mm -hmm. me with y'all and then like those people introduced you to other pockets similarly to what you were saying and so kind of just mutuals of mutuals of mutuals is yeah. like yeah. honestly who I hang out with now on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's just how it goes. Yeah. You're not, in, it's no longer people you choose because you grew up together. Mm -hmm. Definitely, no. Or because they're friends of the family, like mm -hmm. these are intentional relationships like to a certain degree. Yeah. But during the transition, it sounds like y'all had to get the hustle part down. Then yeah. I was outside the first weekend I got here. Okay. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I yeah. was over there in Carrollton at a hookah lounge. <laughs> Carrollton is far oh for gosh. you. Where did you live? No, she was in Plano. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. When you first it's still close to me. Carrollton got some good hookah lounges. Oh, I don't yeah. know It's a couple of yeah. out there. Yeah, it's like 20 minutes from everything. But mm -hmm. Carrollton, yeah. I was outside. I've been, I've been outside since I've been in Dallas, maybe like minus one year, but like yeah. I was still outside. Dallas is an outside yeah. city. place, yeah. You have to be outside. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but I mean, I enjoy it. Cause like, I feel like back home is, so Milwaukee, it don't sound like it's a whole bunch of black people, but like 40 plus percent of the population is black, mm -hmm. like in the city of Milwaukee, but it's not a lot of spaces for us in Milwaukee. It's like mm -hmm. three places that everybody go to. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, that's like this not enough. Yeah. Like and like those three places are cool, but it's just like, I need options. Like once yeah. I come here, to, once I came here to Dallas, it was all kind of stuff. Like it's almost too many options. So when you move, it's always easy to say like, oh yeah, I've grown just cause you moved. And don't get me wrong, like that's definitely incredible. Um, it is a period of growth, but what in your time in Dallas has been that indicator that you have grown? Like, what have you done? What have you created? Um, maybe what did you stop doing? Like to show you I am different or more evolved than who I was before I came here. I would say like in the beginning, I was, because I was looking for a job, mm -hmm. I was in the house a lot of the time, or I was yeah. like actually working, trying to figure out like how, like you said, how I'm gonna get my next rent. Mm -hmm. And so once I was calm and settled, I found myself like, okay, like when you first move, especially when you know certain people in the city, people will try to reach out to you, and it's hard to meet those expectations just because you're doing so much of trying to figure out how to get a job, all these yeah. things. So by the time I was ready to actually reintegrate into society a lot of those things kind of fell flat and so mm -hmm. I found myself trying to find new groups of people to hang out with and then I also thought like okay girl like you need to just take yourself out and just go on solo dates and I had never done that in Seattle like oh, I had just cool. never yeah. took myself I always had friends like my friends were my neighbors down the hall down the street so like I never was not with somebody mm -hmm. or I'm with family so here I found myself going to places alone, like places that I like had a list, you know, you always save stuff when you have, like you mm -hmm. see stuff out here and I was like, okay, well, let me just, that's how I found the Henry. Like I took oh. myself on a solo date and I was like, okay, this is fun. And then when I was isolating myself, um, I created Exquisitely Ebony out of like, no, say with your chest. I know it's funny cause you like, what? Yeah. Exquisitely <laughs> Ebony. And the, the reason you hear the calmness in the beginning is because the state it came out of was like out of isolation and out of like needing to so i journal a lot like specifically this month i'm trying to do the 30 month the 30 day challenge and i've met it every day thank god so far Wait, that's just like 30 days 30 days of straight journaling oh wow um and i remember one day what did i write i was like because so funny thing about journaling is like for me i didn't care for like prompts or like actually like trying to see growth within two to three months I felt like I had nobody to talk to, so I was just mm. saying whatever I wanted to the paper. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, some days it'll be like, today is July 12th, cool. 
if it counts, cool. Cool. That's not cool. Cool. I have I just had coffee. All right, mm-hmm. I'll be back. And then sometimes I'll come back at night and like finish how I actually felt. So like I tried to put no structure to it, but like that's how I originally honestly like found my footing and grounding. And then meet new people, trying mm-hmm. to like network for this, and then like just a few different things. So it's um it's a balance I would have to say. Definitely. So from your isolation, you were able to like pull something out of that that's like a huge benchmark it is and i don't think i give it enough credit because i'm still trying to like conceptualize it to be honest because like some of the things that i was dealing with most of them i have like learned how to actively deal with but some of them are still lingering and so like sometimes like certain things can be triggers which is so weird to say like of your work <laughs> but it is like a, it's, it's a possibility like this is a photo of me and my mom and my mom passed when I was young, so like sometimes looking at this can be really endearing and happy and like, oh my gosh, this is so fun and cute. And then sometimes it's like, it's Mother's Day, all right. Like, this yeah, is, this is kind of awkward and hard, and it's it gets easy sometimes, and then sometimes depending on what your life is like, yeah. shit doesn't. So I learned a lot about myself, mm-hmm. um, and I learned that like growth is a choice and not like. Sometimes they say you grow in uncomfortable situations, but how you react in those uncomfortable situations says a lot too. Absolutely. So it's like th- that that was it. How I was reacting to those situations is when I realized I was mm-hmm. like, okay, cool, you're you're doing a little something. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> Can we see like all of this stuff? Yes. That you um so this Some is people could tap in. I'm gonna put my original um this is my original journal that's available on Amazon. Um fun fact so like the bag that you see this is a new i'm going to show this but like just for reference you see the yellow is the end of the original journal um the journal has like page breaks where like there's i would say reminders questions quotes um there's a nipsey hustle quote in here um there's the meaning of my name in here which is the tote bag that you had gotten Mm -hmm. which means you are deserving of mercy and grace and i think I think all of us should have, if you haven't, continued to grant yourself mercy and grace during such great moves like this. Like, Mm -hmm. you're not in a comfortable space and you're not. So the goal with this brand is to just remind everybody, like, you are okay, you're fine. And if you're not, we'll figure it out. I say one word at a time. Literally, one word is just fine. So this is the um, Black Boys Don't Cry journal, which is now called Black Men Don't Cry. Um, If you're wondering why, just Google it. Um, this is the I'm Proud of You tote bag. It has my exquisitely ebony name on the back and then we have our logo on this side. This is pretty worn and torn. I got this sample quite a while ago and they're pretty durable. Um, I took it to your pool, like I took it to a bunch of different places and it's nice. And then this is um, a mother's hug journal, which feels like a warm embrace. And this is just a blank journal that you can find on Shopify and all that will be somewhere here on the screen yeah. <laughs> it'll be in the description as well goodness that's like the link yes yes yeah. exquisitely yes. ebony oh it's not exquisitely ebony. Exquisitely. which that sounds cool too actually maybe that'll be like exquisitively <laughs> that could be some that's type why of segment. it's so hard for me to say yeah was yeah. it hard for you to, yeah. just so exquisitely like, ebony exquisitely yeah. ebony mm-hmm. and my mom's name starts the e too oh, that's beautiful yeah what was your question <laughs> Um, oh, how we have you grown? Know. Yeah, like we have to grow. Like, and what do you look at? Mm-hmm. What have you created? What have you done? What have you done? Um, yeah, I feel like I've started a lot of stuff that I don't think I would have started mm-hmm. if I would have been back home. Because I feel like when you're still in your hometown, a lot of people are haters and like they're not supportive. Like people want to see you do good, but they don't want to see you do better than them. Mm-hmm. So it's like the sense of like I'll help you, but like you're not gonna get to a point where you're doing better than me so here i felt very um welcomed and like it's room for everybody to grow Mm -hmm. and eat like black people will help you like they'll support you they'll give you ideas because it's like really enough room for all of us so um i started a youtube channel when i moved out here and i was just like kind of my experience of moving here into dallas Mm -hmm. and all of that um and i like originally i wasn't in front of a camera so that was like my first time really like getting in front of a camera not actually make like content and stuff so i'm like <laughs> really Fire. grown, grown. Content. <laughs> yeah, yes. really, really grown um and then also just like starting different businesses like my airbnb mm-hmm. um 
being more yes this is right we are which now. we're recording it. um <laughs> crazy just like things that i would have never had any idea that i would have done um since moving here and also just i feel like fitness and health has really been top of mind since being out here because it's just so many um different gyms and different people who are like doing stuff and active and fit and i don't think that's really the mindset really back home mm -hmm. growing up necessarily like milwaukee not really like a walkable city like you could walk downtown but like you don't really just walk around like milwaukee for real for real like driving everything is close yeah. like 15 minutes i can get everywhere that's one thing i don't like about texas like mm -hmm. everything is far mm -hmm. um but i never really like walked for real or did stuff like we had like planet fitness and like the other you know mm -hmm. mainstream gyms but here you can go to like all kind of different gyms and yeah. stuff and it's where you see black people like in their feet yeah. working out um yeah i just feel like i've grown in ways that i didn't even expect for real like i look back and i'm just like wow like sometimes i'll be driving <laughs> and i see the like dallas skyline i'm like i really live here like, <laughs> that's so that. it's just weird like i love that yeah, but it was a good trip. No, but shout out to you because you really be on your grind. You do. And I think one of my favorite things about you is that you're the friend that I can do anything with for real, for real. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I can't take all my friends to Hot Works because y'all, if I took I you. I still haven't been. <laughs> she's not gonna talk to me for a week. I was like, let me go when I've been in the gym. For she's a not bit. gonna talk to me for a week. No, there's nothing that will get you ready for that. I'm just gonna, you just, that's the only thing you can do. Yeah. But like, and you're doing at least two sessions. Like, yes, how long period. Is session? 15 minutes each, but it's the longest 15 minutes it's of your life. Okay. Yes. Okay. But no, like, we're getting here. Okay. We can, <laughs> we can go hit hot work. Yeah. We've done PF together. Yeah. Like, eat whatever. Yeah, drinks drinks yeah. turn up new places everything yeah. but oh go go to our apartments yeah mm. <laughs> but the best thing is that we have also created this yeah and you Part and being that. able to find friends where you can bring your creations together right. and like grow from that platform yeah so yeah yes that's why i think this podcast is like the biggest indication i i would have to agree because yeah. when i came to dallas mm -hmm. I had urban intellect going. I already started it yes. in Nashville, right? Yeah. But when I came out, out here, it was popping, popping, popping. Yeah. And I was getting featured on stuff I didn't even know about, like different pages reposting me and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm doing numbers. Yeah. And I was able to connect with people from it, bring people on, get their stories out. But it was so draining doing it alone mm -hmm. because when you couldn't have a guest, just talking into the mic is like dang yeah it's it was like i just felt like i wanted more because i know how much i love connecting with people mm -hmm. but i was on a platform by myself and i was like no this is bigger and beyond me yeah so taking a break from it and then coming back and now we're here yeah it is so easy to just pull up like it might be hard like everything else in your day that you have to do but coming here and just like doing this with people that you enjoy yeah that's the biggest thing for me because i wasn't on camera before i refused i refused i was like yeah. no something about it just felt weird yeah, yeah. i didn't i don't want to come off like attention seeking or however they like typically label people but no this is it yeah right here yeah. this is what it looks like to do what you want in life not what you have to do because of what you have your responsibilities tied mm -hmm. to this is us like going out of her way yeah so, yeah, yeah. The Brand P podcast. <laughs> cool. And make sure y'all subscribe. If y'all not subscribed yet. <laughs> no, 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 I just want to give a, a, a quick, quick note. I wanted to say this in the welcome. Mm -hmm. I did want to welcome everyone watching, like people who care about us. Yes. People who are our friends and family. I also want to welcome the weirdos. Mm -hmm. There are weirdos out there just in here peeping, not speaking. Like the people that know us and don't know us, yeah. but not following. Comment. Why are you watching? Comment. You not subscribe. No, so. no, just follow. Stop being weird. Follow page, follow. Because if you comment, we go you outing yourself. And if you're that comfortable, then so be it. But I just want to thank y'all. Yes, yeah, be friends. Because I know you're running the numbers up. Yeah, they are. We're building <laughs> a platform. Abuse too. <laughs> yes. yes. That's so funny. <laughs> so this segment is called Tips from Your Sis. So we talked about building community a little bit. Mm -hmm. But obviously, like, we have our community here.
here that we built. What tips do you have for your building community? Short, sweet, and simple. Get your ass outside. Stop playing. Just go outside. You, I don't care where you go. Even if you by yourself, go outside. Yeah. We talked about solo dates. Yeah. I actually have never taken crazy. myself yeah. on a solo day beyond like getting my nails done or like just basic like girl maintenance. Like I'll do that all day, every day. But like Ew. I've never been like, oh, I want to go eat here, mm -hmm. and just went like I always bring someone. I see you having such a great time knowing I how mean, such a conversationalist you are. Like you'd be talking to the to the bartender, but, to the server, to the person next to you. Like I could see you having a great time. I'm maybe so I have, and I haven't even realized it. But like <laughs> intentionally, like I definitely. That's hilarious. Because that's not that. That's not me saying, oh, I don't go places by myself. Yeah, I do. Because yeah. I travel by myself for work or whatever. Right. Yeah, and true. of course, I'm gonna you know go talk to people. But um, yeah, even if it's a solo date. Even if it's jumping in a group me and just like meeting up with people, yeah. just don't be afraid to go out there because everyone's out there to do the same thing, which is build community. So get your ass outside, put your phone down, bring your phone. Okay. Bring your phone. Get yeah. cute, get a haircut. Don't go musty. Don't go crusty. It be hot in here. Y'all need to wear deodorant this summer. And bring it with because you. it be hot and y'all be musty. And hydrate. Like. Okay. And hydrate. You can't just be drinking. Shower with soap. And a loofah. Who's or, not showering with or soap? The way people be smelling out here in the summer, y'all need to use soap and deodorant. I think people need to bring deodorant. I'm just with saying, them people be outside for oh, five minutes. That's, that's a good point. Okay, and they'd be like, Ooh. it's not to say that like it, it's it, think about it like this. It's 95 degrees plus a majority yeah, of the year. Yeah. And then when you inside a compact place and yes. everybody hot, yes. Ooh, look at so it's even worse. so it's listen. Even worse. It's even worse. Which what everybody needs to do is have a little bag. Yeah. I, I'm not. It can be a purse. It can be. It can be an exquisite, exquisitely ebony, exquisitely epic ebony yeah. bag. <laughs> okay, get you something. Yeah. Go to the travel section. Hand sanitizer, mm -hmm. chapstick, mm -hmm. deodorant, yep. lotion, lotion. Them, them little fans. Men can have them too. Get you, you know, a fan. Get you a fan. Get, get you, you a, a fan. Get you a towel. Get you some white. If you need a rag, okay. cause you be sweat. Cause I, I know it be hot, but then like sometimes I don't be real hot. Then I bump a real hot sweaty person, Oof. and then my whole body just turn hot. <laughs> Listen, get you some baby powder. That actually works so well, especially for women. Figure it out. A lot, but like under your titties. tips for your mm -hmm. sis. Go. Do not sleep on that travel yeah, right section. Under your titties. That works too. Do not sleep on the travel section. If you got a purse. Yeah. You should not just have your lip gloss and vibes. No. <laughs> no. No. Not all them tacos. Yeah, not with all them tacos. The Texas heat and is fighting back when it comes to hygiene. So everybody else needs to alcohol. fight back too. And always leave the crib with some water that you carry with you. Yeah. I, th I think I, I took that tip from being at home. Yeah. I always leave with water. Like, yeah. you need Stay to be hydrated. staying hydrated. Yeah. Can't be hydrated. passing out out here. Mm -mm. Okay. So. You just can't be having Capriccio in the trunk. No, but you can't. Ah, just ah, add the water with it. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. But make sure it's in the trunk. In yes. the trunk. Yes. Closed. 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 Away from you. Okay. Okay. From the front. okay. Oh. oh my god. So, <laughs> what tips do you have for moving? Especially like if it's cross country, a few states away. Like, what tips do you have? Yeah. Um, I'll say my first tip is you're never going to be ready. Like a hundred percent. Like sorry, you sound like someone who says you're never gonna be ready to have kids. You know? Oh, you know, yeah. I'm mean, never I agree gonna be that's ready. That's true too, though. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <Continue. laughs> but <laughs> you're never gonna be a hundred percent ready. Like you have to just do it. Mm -hmm. I was sitting here and questioning if I wanted to move, where I was gonna move to, and like. What I was gonna do, and I just had to get up and do it. I feel like I'm that commercial that like if you're sitting on your couch, <laughs> life's <laughs> passing you by. Yes. You yes. keep procrastinating life over and over. Yes. Why do you yeah. know that one? Maybe no. I'll get a job now. Maybe I'll get a job next year. No, you need to do it now. <laughs> that ain't no talented. That's the one. I'm actually crying. No, that's, that's the, the one. Like, yeah, you gotta just that's do funny. it. Um, Me and him can say it in sync. No, no seriously, <laughs> someone with the commercial <laughs> side by side. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you never gonna be ready, so like just do it. Um, I feel like it's always hard to leave what you're comfortable with. Absolutely. Like your friends, your family, um, the city that you're from, or whatever. So I feel like you also have to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm. 
so you have to know that once you move a lot of times you by yourself like you don't know people um and it's difficult like it, it can be a very difficult transition like mentally mm -hmm. financially all of that but it's so worth it mm -hmm. i feel like it was so like i would do it 10 times over like mm -hmm. over and over again i will move i feel like dallas is my home um and i'm here for good but like i will always support moving from your hometown for real yeah 100 percent. yeah that. that's fire yeah so when you move mm -hmm. a lot of stuff can happen mm -hmm. and it's not always the easy road so what do you recommend for people when they're moving how to navigate adversity um i would say two things one if it's adversity that has like it's if it's like solo adversity um sometimes just like sitting in that helps and i know that sounds like really simple but like sitting in it and just trying to understand what's happening because sometimes a lot of people are like quick to react or like um sometimes it's more of a reaction than a response to the adversity and that's not always good and so i always say like just take a step back see what's going on always self-reflect because you never know like what you could be adding to the problem or like taking away from it so that's how i would deal with solo i solo adversity but then when you're dealing with other people um i talk about this with my ceo all the time just pick up the phone and call like the older i get the older i realize picking up the phone and calling goes a long way whether that's ask, trying to find a price of something at a store and you can't find it online call and ask like they could do it in under 10 seconds when you're like on your google just trying to look it up or if you're sitting here trying to figure out if something is going on with somebody and you have all these thoughts in your head or biases or assumptions and you haven't really talked to that person you could probably just talk to them pick up the phone and see what's going on nine times out of ten it'll go well sometimes it won't but at least you're facing it and not like running away from it because as a child that was easy for me to do just to run away from shit and not like face it head on because sometimes facing it could make it worse like that's also a reality so it's okay to understand that it could go which way or the other but at least it's off of your chest and you've had like dealt with it in a way that's peaceful to you um but pick your battles period yeah or just stay away from weird big weirdos <laughs> <laughs> they everywhere though <laughs> that's why i be at home the first three years I bye was girl <laughs> three years two years when did we start hanging out for real you we don't know you gotta tell us it was like a year in no no but like even after that like we, we oh like for real for real yeah. let's be honest it's, it hasn't been a year yeah it hasn't been, has been. been. I've but been we've always been true. really good yeah, yeah. Real cool. it hasn't been negative it's just been like yeah, i just always been home going like going as far as the frequency yeah. yeah we started out happens. like once a month yeah. like maybe at the beginning of the year i think it was like we're, we're like last year towards the end of last year yeah the end of last year was like once a month yeah and then it was every week it was literally like <laughs> September, October, November, yeah. December. It, no, it was literally, I can remember all yeah. the things that we were doing. Yeah. Coffee, Halloween mm -hmm. party, my birthday. Yep. Yes. Double D's. Double D's, your job, yeah. your birthday. Yeah. Um, Matthew was in town. Um, And then it's been yeah. so much so after much that. After that. Yeah. yeah, no, but see, what I love about that is we have now like this established bond where yeah. even if we have hella shit mm -hmm. going on yeah we pulling up yeah. and it's a safe space where you can come go through your stuff but you can pause and just be good yeah and that's real community mm -hmm. and that's why this is the greatest migration dallas edition mm -hmm. yes make sure y'all follow us on instagram and tiktok subscribe to our youtube channel we almost had a thousand subscribers so make sure y'all subscribe and tune in for the next episode of the